Hey guys, I received a message from somebody wanting to know if it was possible to make three to four thousand dollars a month doing gig work. They said that they were in a toxic work environment and that they were able to leave and get out of that, but they're wanting to know if they're able to do gig work full time. First of all, I do want to say good job to this individual for getting out of their toxic work environment. Toxic work environment can really have a toll on you mentally, not wanting to get up and go to work every day. So good job on getting out of that environment because it's just not even worth it. So the question is, can you make a living doing gig work? And this is really going to depend on your market. Some markets are really good. They're busy. Some markets are up and down. Some markets are a little bit slower. It's going to really depend on your market, whether or not you can meet your daily goals to be able to pay your bills and that's the other thing everybody's responsibility and their bills are different than another person one person might need to bring in two thousand dollars a month to pay their bills another person might need to bring in three or four thousand dollars a month to pay their bills it just really depends on your own personal needs so that's something that you're gonna have to figure out but the thing is with gig work it is not consistent the pay is not consistent it's not like you can go out tomorrow and you're going to be guaranteed making 20 25 30 dollars an hour some days you might make 25 dollars an hour um, another day you might make 35 dollars an hour it's not consistent and so that's something that you need to keep in mind not every day is going to be good you're gonna have some really really good days and you're also gonna have some really really bad days so you just got to keep in mind that gig work is not consistent and some days you might have to go out there and work a little bit later to meet your goal some days you might meet your goal a lot quicker and be able to go home or maybe even stay out a little bit later to make some more pay and maybe make up for a day that might be a little bit slower the other question that I get asked a lot is should I quit my job and do gig work full-time and I have one simple answer for that that would be absolutely no do not quit your job and jump into gig work full time. I always say you need to test out your market before taking the leap because you don't know how your market is. You don't know how busy it is. You don't know what kind of offers you're going to be getting. So you really need to do a very good test on your market before taking any kind of leap like that because with a W-2, you are getting consistent income. With gig work, you are working for yourself. There are days that it is super slow and then of course you're gonna have days that are really good it's not consistent you need to do a really good test on your market before even thinking about leaving your w-2 so let's say you needed to make two thousand dollars a month to pay your bills for example that would break down to five hundred dollars a week which would break down to a hundred dollars a day if you did five days out of the week that would leave you with two days off but the other thing that you need to take into consideration consideration is you're going to have more expenses out of your pocket. You're going to be responsible for paying gas out of your pocket. You're going to have insurance. You're going to have maintenance. At some point, you're going to have tires. So you have to take all of those things into consideration as well as setting taxes aside out of the money you make because taxes are not withheld out of your money like it is out of a W-2. It's our responsibility to make sure we are withholding our taxes. The other question that I get is what kind of car should I drive for gig work? And I would say the best gas efficient car that you can get. Of course, a four cylinder compact or hybrid car is going to be the most gas efficient. I have a Prius, but when I started out, I wasn't sure if I was going to be doing this full time when I originally started and I had a V6 car. I drove that V6 for a bit, testing out my market, making sure this is something that I wanted to do a long term it was so I ended up selling my v6 and ended up getting my Prius which I have absolutely no regrets this car has been absolutely awesome for me of course if you have a low mpg vehicle and you're wanting to do gig work full time a long term then you definitely need to consider a higher mpg vehicle that way you're saving more money in your pocket but definitely if you're not sure if you're going to be doing this long term do definitely test out the 
market in your current vehicle. And then once you figure out if you're gonna be doing this long-term, you can go from there. The other thing that I did wanna mention, if you do decide to jump into gig work full time, always, always make sure you have a backup plan just in case things don't go as you hoped that they would go. Um, sometimes you hop into something and it's going really, really well. And then a few months later, it's not going so well. Things change just like the stock market changes. So you always have to be prepared. Worst case scenario, always have a backup plan. The most appealing thing about gig work is the freedom that it allows. It allows you to work on your own time, come out here and make money on your own time. That was the most appealing thing for me because while I was doing gig work full time, I was working on my side business. I mentioned this in another video. I would take my laptop with me and be doing gig work, making money, and also building my business. So if you do decide to do gig work full time, I would say keep your eye out for other opportunities. Maybe you've always wanted to start your own business. Maybe this is the time to start doing the research, start getting the ball rolling. So I do hope this helped somebody out. Let me know if you guys are doing this part time or full time and what are the pros and cons for you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get these apps turned on and get these wheels to move in. All right, guys. So I turned on Uber Eats and got an order immediately. It is a shop and pay order. Now, the reason why I took it, one, the pay is reasonable and so is the miles. Pay $8.05, 3.4 miles, but it's only one item. It's like some peas and carrots type of dish. I am crossing my fingers that that dish is in there. If it is, this should be pretty simple and straightforward. Do you guys have a guess if it's gonna be in there or not? <laughs> I don't know, you know, sometimes you go shopping and they're out of things. Now, the thing that I don't like is that Uber Eats does not give you the aisle number. So um, I think I have an idea of where it should be. If not, I shall find an employee. We are going in, hopefully it's there and uh, we can get these wheels to move in. All right, we are in the store, like I said, just one item and it is, it's frozen. Okay, this should be easy and I would assume this is there. So we're going to the frozen section. All right, guys, I am in the frozen veggie section and I'm looking for the brand signature and they just want one of them. And I think I spot them right here. Thank goodness I know where the frozen stuff is. Pretty easy to find, but um, you just never know. So let's see, they want the 16 ounce and it says 16 right there so i'm going to do item found and scan all right we're good to go this was absolutely easy so we're going to go ahead out to check out hey hi there What's up? yeah thank you Oh, I always forget this card as the shit. <laughs> awesome. And can I have a little plastic bag for you? We just have a rich, like, big bag. That works. Cool. There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shopping done. I gotta say that is the easiest shopping trip I think I have ever done. It helps too when it's a frozen item and you know where it is and the items available. No line either. I'm like, wow. Pay reasonable, miles reasonable, customers drop off, eight minutes, 3.1 miles. Now you do have to take a photo of the receipt, which I did, and then you can just dispose of the receipt. We're on our way. We're gonna go get this uh, bag of frozen veggies dropped off to the customer. They're probably making something and need an ingredient, I guess. So uh, we're on our way. Hi. Oh, hi there. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate the instructions too. Oh, it helps so yes. much. Oh, thank Have you. Have a good night. Bye-bye.
Last order was a smooth drop off only thanks to the customer. They left me some good notes of a landmark of where to find the entrance to their place because if they didn't have that, I would have been confused. I would have been looking all over and probably would have had to call them. So I'm walking up and she's coming out the door to meet me. Super nice. I had to thank her. I was like, thank you so much for the instructions because it was super, super helpful. Made me get the drop off done quick. You know, sometimes when it's a complicated place, it can really hold up your time looking for the place. So I really appreciate it when a customer leaves instructions, especially when it's more difficult to find. So after I dropped that order off, I turn on my other apps and I had my phone in my pocket. I had to run in somewhere to use the restroom. Anyways, I'm pulling out my phone and I'm looking at my screen and I had accidentally accepted a DoorDash order. I don't know when it happened. <laughs> um, probably within a short amount of time, you know, with my phone in my pocket. Anyways, of course, I'm like, oh my gosh, really concerned. What the heck did I accept? It says $9.75 for the order. It's for Cafe Yum. I am here right now. But of course, I'm like, how many miles is this offer for? So I went into the three lines in the top left corner. I see the customer's name. I tap on it, get their address, put it in my GPS to see how far they are. They are not far at all from the restaurant. They're six minutes. They are in an apartment. They left some detailed notes, which is very nice. Again, love it when the customer does that. So I guess I accidentally accepted a reasonable, a good offer. Thank goodness. Cause you're just like, what the heck? Um, I'm here. I'm going to go check in and they're pretty good about having the order ready. So we get these wheels back to moving. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, just checking on an order for Bana V. Yeah, do it at. Awesome, it's ready, love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> you too. All right, guys, the mystery order was ready. Love this restaurant. Like I said, the orders are usually ready. Don't mind picking up an order from here. Customer six minutes. So I was right with my research and finding out how far this mystery order is. 2.3 miles. We're on our way again. It's an apartment. They left me a lot of detailed notes, um, which I do appreciate, but it's like, hopefully, you know, you get there and it's easy to figure out. So we're on our way. We shall find out. So the mystery order ended up turning out to be really good. I've actually delivered to this customer before. So as soon as I was getting close, I was like, I think I know who it is. GPS actually took me right there, but they had put in detailed instructions just in case, which was very thoughtful of them. Turned out being an awesome order. It actually ended up being a little bit more too. I was originally told $9.75 and it ended up being $10.75. There ended up being $2 peak pay, which is nice also. Now I did have to decline an offer and offer came in right afterwards for Popeyes nine dollars and 75 cents now it does say guaranteed but the miles the miles are pushing it for me that is just too far for me for nine dollars 75 cents it was 8.5 miles that was gonna take me into another city too far out so that was a decline so I'm gonna get out of this neighborhood and see what else we can get all right guys so I'm driving down the road and an offers are ringing in for uber eats an offer that I just could not refuse my kind of offer and I was like 0.2 miles from this restaurant it is for $16.43 for 1.2 miles once I pick up the offer it should be around a mile um, and this restaurant's pretty good sometimes there's just a little bit of a wait um, but it is a Chinese food restaurant and they're pretty good so I'm gonna go in there check on this order and get these wheels to move in Jason M. Uber right here, the Perfect. Big right Thank there. you. Have a nice day. You too. Chili? Chili? Okay. Order was 
was ready just as I had expected and I looked at the order before I went in there. People like to order like a lot of Chinese food usually when I pick up. So she'll put it like in a big box and uh, sure enough she did. So I brought my big bag in. It's raining out too so make sure it stays nice and hot although they're right around the corner 1.2 miles. It is a me at door. They do have a pin that they do have to give me so we are heading there now and go get this order dropped off. That was an awesome order. It was a house, super easy to find. Um, like I mentioned, I needed a pin from the customer. Now that box of Chinese food was heavy, a very heavy one. So I took it out of uh, the bag before I went up to the customer's door, rang the bell, they came right out as well as their adorable dog. Um, so all went really smooth. Now I did have quite a bit of spark orders come in throughout the night, but none of them were good. They were all in another city, a city that's 25, 30 minutes, 40 minutes away, too far away. The pay and the miles look good, but again, you got to drive from where you're at to that Walmart and then it's the miles from there to the drop off. So none of them were worth it. Let me know how Spark's been going for you. Has things been slow? Um, are you not getting as many orders? Right now I really haven't done any Spark because a lot of the orders are further away and the ones that are close in my area, the pay has not been worth it um, to accept. So hopefully things will pick up soon. Let me know how things have been going for you. Tonight hasn't been bad at all and yesterday I went out with my husband. We actually went and ran some errands and turned on the phone. Afternoon was like super, super slow. We had both of our phones on. Got one order, a really reasonable offer from a customer that I've delivered to several times and he's delivered to. Haven't delivered to them in a while, but they always really take care of their driver. And after that, it was dead. And then the evening time, which is my favorite time, was busy. Uh, so we ran errands, did some orders. So that was kind of nice. But um, yeah, tonight hasn't been bad. Like I said, Spark, I haven't gotten any really good offers to take. Like I said, hopefully that will change soon. So I'm going to leave you guys right here. I'm going to keep these wheels to moving. So appreciate you guys riding along with me as always. And of course, if you guys enjoyed riding along with me tonight, do give the video a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I will be seeing you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.